goals here, setting target, designing to target, and building to target in the context of how a project is developed. So traditionally, what do we do? We have an organization that decides that they want to have a capital project, a building that houses people, a building that, uh, that houses labs, um, that it does a function for that, for that organization, and they decide that they can spend a certain amount of money for it. This is very important, the allowable cost. This is the amount of money that we're willing to pay for this thing based on a, on a return on investment, based on business decisions. Now, traditionally, this pre-project planning is done in isolation, right? An organization surrounds in a small group, decides they want a building, a business planning department usually gets involved, and they, and they have a conversation with the CEO, the CFO, a few, a few managers, and, a, um, and then perhaps the board. And they decide that if, if we build this thing, it makes good business sense. And what do they do? They, they Im immediately, well, we need to go hire an architect. So they go out and hire an architect. And the architect does what they do and have done traditionally, and that is they become the translator of the owner's value proposition in the context of the construction world, right? So they go into what constitutes design, and they do SD, SDs, DDs, schematic designs, design development, and then construction documents. In the case of the Cathedral Hill Hospital in downtown San Francisco, a $1.8 billion project, they did exactly that. And it was a $43 million feasibility study. They just, at the end of that expenditure, they decided that building was too big, it cost too much money, and it didn't provide the value that was necessary, right? So this is an example of what typically happens on, in, in organizations in, in the development of a project. And they, so they design it, then they go out to, out to bid. Oh, we're going to the market. So we, we're going out to the market, so that must be the lowest market rate for this, this uh, building. We don't think that's true, but that's what we do. They go out and build it. They have, there's waste involved. The, um, uh, they have change orders, and in the end, you have projects that don't deliver the value that was originally intended. They are, they are more expensive than they need to be. They are delivered um, uh, unreliably, and, they are, and we hurt and kill too many people, right? So that's the traditional scene. What we're saying in, in integrated project delivery, under the context, remember, Back to basics, setting the target, designing the target, and building the target. The pre-project planning, we would like to see more integration in that arena in pre-project planning so that not only are internal organizational people involved, that is business planners, CEOs, CFOs, and, and board members and managers, but in that business planning activity, we, the pre-business planning, the, the project is actually an originally conceptualized with input from uh, architects, contractors, and sub-trades in the pre-project planning. In project definition, then move into project definition where the actual business planners are engaged with the team in order to examine a project that, does, that performs a validation study. So the, the owner decides that if we, project, if we build this project for this, that does these things for this cost, that it makes good business sense, the team validates that information and answers the question, can we build the project for this price that does this, these things? Um, with this certain quality? The answer to that is either yes, no, or yes if. Yes if certain innovation is true, yes if, if uh, 
the market rate doesn't go, or the market rate for copper doesn't go up, et cetera, right? Then that information is conformed back to the, to the uh, deciders, the, the boards of directors and the corporate managers to say, in this go no, gate, go, no go gate, I only have one slide and I screwed it up. Oh, yeah, yeah. You want to run this? All right. Uh, you know, that's not the worst thing that's ever happened to me. A few years ago, Luis Fernando asked me to go to Chile and speak to the mining industry. Oh, this is ironic because I'd never been in a mine, right? And... And so despite Luis, Luis Fernando's apprehensions, I went down and, and, and spoke. It was a big deal. It was a big honor. And I spoke to the Minister of Mines and was there. And, and this summit that Luis and the guys have put together so wonderfully. And I went up and I gave the presentation. I just killed it. It was just a great presentation. I clicked along. Everything, everything went on just right, and I got off, and there was this, this was, there was this look of relief on Luis Fernando's face. Everything was fine. I got down to the steps, set of steps on the side of the stairs. I got down, and I realized that my fly was open. <laughs> <laughs> Minister of Salmoniah kept looking at me and smiling, and I, did, I, I, I kept thinking, wow, I'm really doing good. That's a true story. All right, where was I? I got 14 and a half minutes left. <laughs> okay, so we do a validation plan, and that validation plan is done with the input of the people that are actually building the building. This makes pretty good sense, right? It, the information that's coming out of there is valid and it is the pledge of the team to, of this is how we're going to build this building, All right? So now here's the first ball, setting the target. And we're, and we're all, they're asked over and over and over again, how do you set the target, All right? And those people in this room that have been involved with the integrated project delivery project, know what I'm talking about. So, again, in, in this range, we, we established, traditionally, we established the allowable cost. This is a price of, that we were, we, that the organization is willing to pay for this project. Down here, we're establishing the expected cost. That is, at the end of the validation study, the group, the team, should have an idea of about what it's going to cost to build this building in this market period, right? Market goes up and down. So then it's up to the team to take that expected cost, this is what we expect that the building would, would be able to be delivered at, and challenge themselves to do better. So how do they do that? One way, obvious way, is the last planner system, right? At Lean Project Consulting is an organization that Glenn Ballard and Greg Howell established um, in, in the mid-90s at some time. So we teach people how to use the last planner system. Glenn was the inventor of the last planner system, right? So we teach people how to do that. Now, as time has gone on, we know that if we put last planner system on a project and we really don't give them that much coaching, we just give them the forms and, and, and help them at first and, they don't, and we don't really engage with them, they're gonna get three weeks improvement on the schedule in five months of worth of work. 
it, it, as a coach, if I do nothing, if I just hand them the stuff, they're going to get three weeks and five months. Right? So if it's a 10-month deal, they get six weeks. Right? So if you know that going in, that team can, can say, okay, this, is, this project goes on this long. We, we know that we're going to get improvement on the schedule by three weeks and five months multiplied by the, by the period of the, the construction period that you expect. And you can quantify that in general conditions, right? It, it's worth money not being on site. If everybody's not mobilized there, that's worth something. So they can assume that they're going to get that and set that as a target lower than the expected cost. Here's a big deal. In the validation study, you, um, Camillo gave a really good picture of how clusters are organized. Usually established in, um, uh, in buckets of, of uh, mechanical, electrical, structural, right? So at the end of the validation study, they know much more about the project than they would even into SDs, or even into DDs in a traditional sense, right? So they've done very detailed estimates. However, there are still things they don't know. So when you're setting the target cost, you can ask the electricians to identify those things that they just don't know. There are some things they really know, like they're going to use copper, right? There's some things they really know, some things they're not so sure about, and some things that they really just don't know. And, and those have fear-based contingencies. We, we know that traditionally we've had trouble with this element of, of the mechanical system, and so I've got this large number in there. So in the validation phase, when you're setting targets, ha get into the conversation while you're collaborating amongst each other, get into the conversation about what it, oh, do you really fear still going into that end of the project and have the owner at the table ready to say, you know what, go ahead, reduce it. If this, I, I accept that challenge and if this turns out worse than that, then I'll make up the difference, right? Set the target cost. Move forward into design since this validation study has been done already. We really only do design development. Schematic design primarily has been done in this, in this first earlier phase. Not completely, but mostly. So it's really design development, and, and so you're designing to target, and this is completely shifting the trend in the, in the industry that, that ta cost is a result of design. Well, in integrated project delivery, cost is a design parameter. You are designing to cost. We don't have the budget for gold-plated doorknobs, right? So design development. And then in design, we, this, instead of being uh, construction documents, this is detailed engineering. Why should a, the architect's engineer draw a set of drawings, line drawings, in the case of elect electrical line drawings, and then the first thing that happens is that the subtrades electrical engineer redraws the drawings. That's pure waste. Kind of like having more than one slide, as long as you don't screw it up. Um, so you've set the target, you're designing to target another go-no gate, permit, and then build the target. And, and you're building the target using the, the, the types of tools that we've been talking about and that Camillo um, went through so nicely. Last Planner, 5S, Tack time, right? All that really good stuff. BIM, BIM, BIM. Collaborate, really collaborate. Treat projects as a network of commitment. Optimize the whole. Increase relatedness among the parties. 
tightly coupled learning with action, all that really good stuff, right? Set the target, design the target, and build a target. That is what integrated project delivery is. And so when we're, we've worked with teams, large and small, uh, all over the world, and when they come to us and say, how do you actually do this? There's all those buckets of tools that are necessary and can be very sophisticated or they can be very simple. Usually simple is better. But you're still doing these three things, right? So I, I left this stuff up here in terms of training touch points because You know, we haven't done this in the industry for centuries like we've done other construction practices. This is new to us even if we're practiced at it. Those of us that have done it most, and I've seen hundreds of integrated project delivery projects, but those of us that have done it most still need to remind ourselves about this basic underlying thought and we need to understand what we need to do at, at different phases. So the, it uh, mostly all starts at the top, right? You need to get buy-in and support at the highest level of the organization to be able to really get the most traction. Now, what does that mean? What is support, right, is one. How does the CEO actually support the project? Well, one of the reasons is they're in, they should be increasing their relatedness to the project. So they should know what's going on. They should know the project has, has, has processes. So that a board member comes to him and says, have you seen what those guys are doing out down there in the project? He can, he can turn and say, yes, I know exactly what they're doing. They're doing the right thing, so now let's calm down and address your issue, right? So that's, that's a different conversation than, than have you seen what those guys are doing down there on, their proce on that project? Oh, well, n no, I don't really know, uh, but I'll go find out. Well, you need to go down there and stop it, right? That's a, those are two different conversations. So highest level of the, of the organization support, and, and so what we propose is to go in and give that training and, and information and exposure to the project at the highest level of the organization so they can actually understand what we're talking about and actually provide the, the support that, we're, that the project team needs. In project definition, the first thing we do is, is get an assemble an integrated project delivery team. The owner needs to ha know how are they going to hire the people and what type of people do they need to hire in order to deliver an integrated project delivery team? He, Camillo showed a, a great example of, of sales collateral that could be brought to an integrated project delivery interview. I sit through interviews with owners all the time and you'd be surprised how many contractors come to the table and they don't know what they're talking about. And, the, and I don't have to say a word because the, the people who are sitting in the interview from the organization are looking at me and saying, I don't know anything about Last Planner, but it doesn't sound like that guy knows what he's talking about, right? So we're proposing that, that the, this training and information about what, what integrated project delivery is starts at the top and starts very at the very beginning with the owners. Um, we propose that owners need help in facilitating the IPD contract. They don't really understand that we're talking about a cost plus arrangement. They don't really understand that if you, if you glean out the um, fee, the profit, of the project participants of that, that participate in the risk pool, they don't understand that now we're just talking about cost. The profit part is out on the, 
has already been negotiated. The fee percentage is already being negotiated, and the the uh, project participants are going to put that fee 100% at risk, right? So then when we get into it, we've ascent, now we've assembled the team, and we start doing team learning, boot camps, where our, our uh, introduction to Lean and Last Planner and, and study action teams that, where we read books together and we, we congeal and, co and, and collaborate and coordinate as a whole team. Then moving down on, in, the, in the scheme of things as you go, as you progress on the project, we have team organization workshops. How are they going to assemble themselves? What, is the pro what does the uh, org chart look like? Is it flat? Is there a hierarchy? It, does it look like a network? Just think of the power of the network that we have, the World Wide Web. In 1960, at least 1955, well, in 1955, there were three, web, uh, three sites on the World Wide Web. There was one site on the West Coast, one site in the Midwest, and one site on the East Coast, and it belonged to the US government. And now, today, 97% of information is transmitted over the World Wide Web. This is the golden age, right here, right now. This is it. Just think of the power of the web in, and the network in our world. And now translate that to a job site. Camillo showed a great example of, of, the, of the communication uh, lines between all the players that what which one is a an integrated project delivery and which one is just hierarchical right that communication is really important how do you organize yourself around that how do you organize yourself about communication protocol how do you organize yourself around target value design who is going to be the target value design manager right these things are important and and if you, if you don't understand that this is what you're supposed to do, then how can you go about it, right? Co-location workshops. Where are we going to co-locate? What does a big room look like? Again, he had some great examples of, of, of big rooms, but what is this room going to look like on this project that, that is of this complexity in this location and of, of this value, right? A3 training, good 5Y, all of this stuff is really good, really good tools and things that you can rally around after you understand the basic tenets of, of set target, design a target, and build a target. And then, and then con continuing on down, or I did it again, god damn it. <laughs> and then continuing on down in the, into this, the same line of thought moving forward into constructing so that you are delivering the project reliably and safely, right? Okay, so I hope that was helpful in, in putting integrated project delivery into context. Um, and I thank you.